Today we've got something a little different. Here we have a charger for, I believe, a scissors lift. One of those uh, little cart things you can ride on and it goes up really high. This came from one of my local mechanics who I think just picked it up recently, probably on trade or an auction or something. And he says the charger is not charging the batteries. So what we have here, we got our AC input and it is, the output is 24 volts at 19 amps. So it's 600 watts. And this is gonna be a switching power supply, judging by the heat sink and the fact that uh, a 600 watt linear transformer would be humongous. So there's our output side, which just goes to some ring terminals. Must just connect right to the battery. And I hope they never accidentally short those out because 600 watts would make quite a bang. Uh, first, let's confirm that it really is bad. So I'm going to plug in the nice sketchy AC cord, which looks like it has been... See, I thought I saw another cut up. Yeah, it's like it's been cut and spliced at least once. Let me get this plugged in. All right, so I got live AC on the plug. I'm just going to uh, get the meter ready here. on these ring terminals. Got my meter set to DC. Zero volts, let's juice it up. Does have some indicators here. They're all lit. So far, nothing on the output. We're sitting at zero volts. Lights are just flashing, still dead zero. Um, it's possible this charger is looking for a load and if it doesn't see a load, it might not turn on. I'm just going to uh, put a light bulb across there. This is a 12 volt light bulb and if it sees 24 volts, it's gonna get nice and bright. So far, it hasn't kicked on. I'm gonna do a reset here. Let it die all the way down. Okay, it looks like it's dead now. Got the light bulb connected. And a couple flashes, but still, still zero. Well, I think it's safe to say that they are correct with their troubleshooting. This charger does seem to be dead. So let's open it up. off the bat it looks like these capacitors are puffed but they're actually not puffed uh, it's just the plastic caps on the capacitors are popped up but the actual metal of the can is still flat so that's okay I see a little hot spot down here and right next to that is an automotive fuse. So what do you suppose the chances are it just has a blown fuse? Wouldn't that be nice if just somebody accidentally shorted it out and popped a fuse? And it's, it's soldered right to the boards. They didn't, they didn't want to make that user serviceable for some reason. Let's get the meter in continuity. Now we get the beeps and the fuse is right across here. It is these two. These two right here. Okay, so it, so the fuse is good. I think it's worth taking a closer look at the hot spot. It goes to a relay. It's one of those large uh, 30 amp. Yeah, it's a 30 amp relay almost more like uh, what I see in uh, industrial um, controls and one of the leads of that relay might be chewed up um, maybe I'll get that out on the microscope maybe I'll reflow it actually even better yet 
Let's see if there's power on the other side of the relay contact, which should be, I think, uh, which way is that facing? Okay, the relay's facing this way. So here is the coil. Here's the common. So one side is probably normally uh, closed. The other side is probably normally open. So let's see. That means there should be power on the common. And then when the relay turns on, it switches in that way. So let's see if there's power on the other side of the relay contact. And I hope I don't short anything out. Okay, the lights are flashing. It's doing something. I think maybe that's a negative terminal there. And yeah, there's nothing. Nothing. Hmm. This battery charger had me outsmarted for quite a while. And let me explain why. So, if it doesn't sense a dead battery on the output, it won't even try to turn on. And by that, I mean it won't even turn on the primary side. So let me uh, show you here what's going on. So this is the, the divider. The transformer sits here. So this is the primary. This is the secondary. This is the 24-volt charging side, which is actually in the 30-volt range. Uh, and this is the high-voltage uh, rectified DC side. And here you can see we have a MOSFET here and a MOSFET here. And on these big caps, and with this bridge rectifier, it's set up in a way so that there's a 165 volt positive and a 165 volt negative and a common in the middle. And they have that, uh, you know, the alternating uh, on off to make the AC to drive the primary side of the transformer. Anyways, long story short, I was surprised that even the primary side won't turn on if it doesn't sense a battery. So this thing has redundant relays. It's a little overkill on safety, and I wasn't expecting that. Because I wasn't getting primary, I wasn't getting secondary, and here I have marked off, uh, this is the little plus and minus, is the secondary side before the relay. So I was expecting power up to that point until the, the logic says it's okay, and then turn on the relay. Anyway, that's enough blabbering on. Let's take some tests. So what we're gonna do, is um, to start off my power supply is going to pretend it's a dead 24 volt battery just so we can get this thing to activate so i'm just going to hook it up to plus to plus minus to minus now it thinks it has a dead 24 volt battery and we're going to give it some ac and the lights over here start flashing and doing its thing and it should show a charging state here pretty soon because there it's doing something what's it doing there okay so the first led that means the battery is dead and it's charging it see that flashing green okay so now it should be activated and it should think it's on so let's take some measurements so here is the secondary side and it's at 33.8 volts this is the battery posts right here it is 22 volts so somewhere between here and there we're losing uh what seven eight volts let's look across those relay contacts which are here to here <laughs> okay almost 12 volts loss across the relay contacts it should be zero volts across the relay contact. So this whole time is just a bad relay. One of these guys. So let's get that relay out of there.
I did lose one top half of the pad. We'll pull that relay out for the coil. The rest of it looked good. This was the one that was already burned up to begin with. But the connection for the uh, coil is actually on the other side of the circuit board. We're losing here some glue. It was glued in. Uh, so as long as the solder flows, uh, as long as I can get solder to flow through that, it'll be fine. Um, if not, I can check that connection later. It just goes up to this, across the diode. That'd be the diode that snuffs out the uh, kickback from the coil. Let's take a look at this relay. Cause look at the side of this thing. Look at a melted, melted corner. So I think we, uh, we know the culprit. There is the uh, the relay contacts. Kind of hard to see. Uh, kind of hard to see in the camera. Let's go under the microscope. All right, yeah, that really was messed up. All right, I check continuity on this one pad here that uh, that lifted. Um, I check continuity from the pin to where it goes, and it's good. So I was able to get enough solder down in there to get a flow on the other end. So let's test it. Let's see if we no longer have a voltage drop across the relay. So I'm going to hook my dead battery back up. I'll hook up AC and we'll watch the lights. If we watch the power supply voltage now. Okay, so it's showing a charge. Oh. Can I think what happened? I'm gonna do that again. I bet the voltage on the power supply shot up. Because now that power is actually getting to the output. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this again. Uh, I'm gonna apply AC, and if we watch the power supply voltage, it should briefly jump up as it kicks on the secondary, the actual output. There we go. Did you see that? Jumped to 33 real quick. So that means it's working. That means power is actually getting out to the output. All right, time to assemble.
Thanks for watching.